Well, you've heard of the expression, do as I say, not as I do. Well, one of the nation's leading evangelical voices is apologizing for something he did that is an apparent violation of the honor code he holds his students to. Jerry Falwell Jr. posted a photo of himself in unzipped pants with one arm around a woman and the other holding a glass with dark liquid, which he described as, quote, black water. Falwell explained in a radio interview that it was all in good fun. You know, it was weird because she could she was she's pregnant, so she couldn't get her she couldn't get her pants up. And <laughs> so I was like trying to like my I had on a pair of jeans that I haven't worn in a long time, so I couldn't get mine zipped either. And so <laughs> and so I just put my belly I just put my belly out like hers and it was just um she's my wife's assistant and she's a sweetheart and I should never have put it up because embarrassed her because um anyway i i've apologized to everybody and i promised my kids i'm gonna try to be i'm gonna try to be a good boy from here on out well that apology may not be enough falwell is the head of liberty university which maintains a strict code of ethics banning lewd lyrics sexual content and immodest dress, among other things. And this isn't the first time that Falwell Jr. has caused a scandal. He was urged to step down after making a blackface joke. One member of the university's advisory board, Congressman Mark Walker, tweeted that he was appalled by Falwell's behavior and is calling on him to resign. And Congressman Walker is joining me now. Um, sir, thanks for coming on to talk about this. You, you are calling for him to resign. Tell us why. Uh, Brianna, I just think that there is a code that leaders have to live by, especially when you are leading the largest Christian evangelical university in the country. Now, Jerry Jr., Jerry Falwell Jr., deserves a lot of credit for building Liberty University to what it is today. But there's been a pattern of behavior that's not becoming to what that school's code of conduct is. In fact, on the property itself, his brother Jonathan Falwell pastors one of the largest churches in the country, a, a church that his father Jerry Sr., Jerry Falwell Sr., founded many years ago. So this pattern of behavior has become troubling, and I believe, whether it's a leave of absence or stepping down, I believe his behavior, the pattern of it, is warranted this. Even if you listen to his comments on the radio show, he apologized for embarrassing the young lady. He did not apologize to the thousands of alumni, alumni the students, the faculty, and many others who hold Liberty University in a high esteem. And, um, I mean, why do you think there is this pattern of behavior? What's, what do you think is going on here? It's very troubling. I, you know, I was a pastor for 16 years myself before running for the United States Congress uh, almost seven years ago. Uh, I, I am concerned about it. I, I don't want to speculate. I don't know his heart. I don't know if there's other things going on. But this is a pattern that is, it's over the last maybe two to three years, has really come to the forefront. And, and as a pastor, as I was just referencing, every meeting that I try to have, I try to have a redemptive element that runs through it. I hope that's how the folks will deal and talk with uh, Jerry Jr. But this, this, we cannot look the other way with this kind of behavior where you have this strict code, one that I don't disagree with uh, in many cases, but you're out here promoting and talking, speaking with undertones, uh, and, and being smug about even the Instagram posts that I'm going to try to be a better boy from now on. Uh, there's no penitent heart in that, and, and I would hope that he could do better. I, I'm not here to try to attack him, but I am saying this is not the design of the university or his founding father who literally, uh, blood, sweat, and tears created this on the side of a mountain. And Falwell, of course, is a big supporter of President Trump's. Are, are you worried at all that his actions could hurt the president's evangelical support? I, I don't think so. You know, in, evangelicals are independent uh, in their thinking process when it comes to their churches, their, whether it's universities in this case, uh, schools, whatever it might be. I, I don't think there's any factor in that at all. I just think from a specific individual standpoint, uh, as a former pastor, as an evangelical, someone who has taught as an instructor on the campus of Liberty University, I just felt like it was time to address it, not from a harsh or an attack vendetta, mm -hmm but something that I believe that he has reached a place where he needs some people around him to help guide him through this season of life. 
I, I want to ask you about something that the president said, especially I, I think this is something that with your perspective as a man of faith and as a former pastor and as a Republican that I think uh, I really want to get your insight on. This is uh, an attack that he made on Joe Biden. He's following the radical left agenda. No religion, no anything. Hurt the Bible, hurt God. He's against God. He's against guns. He's against the Bible, essentially against religion, but against the Bible. Joe Biden and the radical Democrats are against fracking. They're against guns and they're against the Bible. Essentially, they're against God. If Joe Biden were to become president, they want to crush religious liberty. They don't want religion. I mean, I, th I think we're all aware Joe Biden is a is a man of faith. I'm, I'm sure that you have disagreements with him on that. But just on the president attacking his faith, what, what do you think of those remarks? Well, I, I think of the scripture, I believe it comes from the book of Proverbs that says, uh, man looks on the outside, God looks on the heart. Uh, we don't know someone's heart. Uh, we do uh, have some um, ability to look at one's actions. In a matter of faith, I heard uh, Senator Reid just talk a few minutes ago that that's a very personal matter. It is to some degree, but we're also commanded to go uh, and teach, make disciples uh, across the world. So I, I do believe that there should be some fruit. Um, if you're going to talk the talk, you must walk the walk. But specifically as far as uh, going after somebody, as far as their faith and the level of it, it's something that's not, uh, not my wheelhouse or something that I'm not comfortable with, yet at the same time, if you're going to have zero problem when it comes to the level of abortions that we see in this country uh, and some other what we would call moral things uh, from our perspective, uh, I think you can push back a little bit and, says, and say uh, this lifestyle doesn't match what you're talking about when it comes to your faith. But as far as knowing and what's in someone's heart, I believe only Almighty God knows that. But there are, I mean, there are a number of moral issues, and you talk about talking the talk and walking the walk. Couldn't you make the same criticism or raise the same questions about President Trump and his actions? Oh, I, I don't believe there's any questions that uh, when it comes to someone with uh, a, a, a background such as the president's, uh, you can certainly make a case that this is someone who has not led the most moral life, but unlike the chancellor or the president of a Christian university, it is the people that get to make that decision every four years in November to be able to say, well, do we want someone who has uh, a, a, a sweet or kind or gentle or even a moral personality, if you will, or do we want someone who's able to get us from point A to point B? And I think there's much uh, evidence to support the argument that for the first three years, three, two years, or three years, two months, three years, three months, that the president did exactly that when it comes to our economy, when it comes to criminal justice reform, there is much to celebrate. So I think that's where the American people are and were. We'll see what they say in this November, but it's not necessarily the moral content that makes a good leader. Would you like to have both? Certainly always, but I think the success in getting things done is what most of the American people are looking for in an elected official. Hey, Congressman Mark Walker, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for joining us. Our privilege, thank you.